Hi everyone, I'm Timothée Ravier and in this video we'll be talking about Fedora Chorus and CentOS Stream Chorus. So we have a lot of new agenda today, we're going to talk about Fedora Chorus, uh, where it is supported, where it is available, uh, short addition into RPM OS 3, then we'll talk about emission, and then we'll take a look at how Fedora Chorus is distributed via streams, and finally how it relates to CentOS Stream Chorus and how all of this fits into OKD. So first, what is Fedora Chorus? Fedora Chorus is an official Fedora edition. So we are an official Fedora edition since Fedora 37, so it's been quite a while now. The goal of Fedora Chorus is to focus on the single node and the cluster use case. We're more interested in the cluster use case, obviously, for the OKD. Um, OKD use case. Fedora Chorus itself is the successor to two container-first operating systems, uh, one that is called Fedora, that is Chorus Inc. Uh, container Linux, and the second one is the Fedora Atomic Host project that was from Project Atomic. It, op it incorporates IDs from both of those projects, so both uh, from you know, takes the provisioning stack and the cloud native expertise from Container Linux. And the Fedora Foundation, the update stack, and SLinux Linux from Fedora Atomic Host. So the philosophy behind Fedora Chorus is that uh, it, it is based on three pillars, three main pillars. The first one is automatic updates by default. So no interaction are needed by administrators. When you set up a node, you get automatic updates by default. Automatic provisioning. Uh, this means that Every single node that you install in, as part of your cluster, every single instance of Fedora Chorus starts from the same point. And then you use Ignition to provision a node and configure, uh, configure it on first boot. Those elements here enable you to do e what we call immutable infrastructure. So you can automate the deployment and the system configuration of your entire fleet of system. And if you want to change it, for example, we want to change the config file or we want to um, redo, reset up another instance of your cluster somewhere, so you can update your configuration and reprovision your nodes to apply changes. You can always apply changes to nodes live, but if you want to do multiple infrastructure, you can do it easier in a much, in much easier fashion with Fedora Chorus. So Fedora Chorus comes uh, for several supported platforms and architectures. Uh, first for platforms, we are available on a lot of cloud and virtualization platforms. So I won't list them all here, but uh, they listed here on the slide. I won't, I won't read them all. Uh, it is directly launchable on AWS and GCP if you are on those. If you want to install Fedora Chorus and build virtual infrastructure, you have several options. The first one is the live ISO, which is kind of a like live system uh, that offers both automated and interactive interactive and solution options. You can also use Pixie, uh, so over the network, to boot your system and install Fedora Chorus, or, uh, and, or use raw disk images and, and use that to, to write on disk uh, on the disk directly. Uh, we support both the, the classic disk format and the 4K native disk uh, format. We're now available, Fedora Chorus is now available for all four architectures that are part of Fedora, so x86, AR64, S390X, and WebRC6480. So let's move ahead with a short introduction to RPM OS3, which is core to how Fedora Chorus works. So the idea behind RPM OS3 is that it's an hybrid package, uh, image package system uh, that enables us to have automatic upgrades. The idea is that it functions a little bit like Git, but for your operating system. So it stores all the files of the, of the operating system uh, in a repository, a little bit like a Git repository. The updates themselves are atomic, they are safe, and really easy to roll back. You can have several versions of your operating system installed, and so if one fails to boot or has a critical bug, you can always roll back to the previous version. With RPMS3, you have also options for 
changing the content of the system. So uh, usually image-based systems are very fixed on what's included into the image and changing that is difficult. Here with the Hopper MS3, you have options to do local uh, package layering, which means that you can take packages and replace uh, those that are existing in the image or uh, add new ones. So uh, you can do that live locally on, on Node. One thing that changes with the fact that we're using our industry is that it, the system comes as an image. So instead of having uh, hundreds or thousands of versions for diff all the different packages that you have in the system, they're, they're still there, but essentially they are hidden behind a single version number uh, that we give to all the Fedora Quest release. So for here, I have an example here. The system itself is mounted read-only by default. Uh, so not everything is read-only, but the, the slash user partition, which has the system content, is mounted read-only. That by itself uh, enables uh, to prevent some accidents and uh, accidental uh, removal files, changes, etc. and enforces the uh, a split a split layer between the system content and the user content. It all helps reduce the impact of some attacks and block some real vulnerabilities, for example, the uh, run C1. With this comes a clear distinction because now you have slash user, which is the content that is coming from the distribution, so from Fedora Chorus, from the packages. And the administrator writes changes to slash etc with the system configurations. It comes with the defaults from packages. And finally, you have all the user content or the system user content, which is stored in slash bar, which is writable, uh, just like slash etc. And uh, here, our permission stream makes extra care to not touch the content in slash bar during upgrades. So here it is with our primary stream. Now let's take a look at the ignition, uh, which is a cool part of how we uh, we we make Fedora Quest easy to provision on clouds and bare metal. So the basic idea behind ignition is that it enables you to automate the provisioning of nodes and the configuration of nodes on first boot. That's how we use it in Fedora Quest. Uh, the idea is that you will have um, Everything that you need for uh, for your system can be encoded into the config uh, and uh, to an ignition config, and then passed to a node on first boot, and then uh, the ignition will set up all the configuration for your node uh, on the first boot and, and configure your system. All of this makes it really easy to automatically reprovision a node because if you have all the configs into an ignition, you can uh, reprovision a node directly using the same config. We we say that ignition is best is, is good because we have you can use it both on bare metal and cloud and use it for, as the same starting point to to configure nodes uh, instead of having multiple options for uh, cloud uh, for cloud and bare metal uh, kickstart etc. So ignition configs themselves they are declarative JSON JSON document that are provided usually via user data on, on platforms. So Ignition runs only once on, on during the, the first boot during the init from FS stage. So even before file systems are mounted. It can do a lot of things. It can write files, system the units, create users, partition disk, completely reformat file systems, change the layout, do red, etc. There's a lot of options. The, the cool uh, part of Ignition, the, one of the cool uh, mechanics of ignition is that if the provisioning fails for whatever reason, then the boot will fail. So you either get fully provisioned system or not no system at all. The ancient config themselves are more machine friendly. So like we call that JSON, it's not it's it's JSON. You can read it, but it's not really great to write and and um, and manage. So here on the right, there's like a short example of what an ignition config would look like uh, with several fields, uh, uh, the version, the version of the config itself, and uh, a password with um, um, a, core, a core user with a password and, and an SSH dry scheme. So as ignition configs are not really nice to write by hand, uh, we also have what we call uh, transpiler, which is the boot-in. So 
Beauty in itself is so configuration transpiler that takes nice, uh, friendly, human-friendly YAML configuration files and translate them into uh, ancient JSON files. The idea is that it's basically the ignition syntax plus some um, some sugar and some shortcuts that enables you to make things that enables us to make things easier for you. For you. The transpiler also has uh, validation and lints uh, that enables us to catch uh, updates, uh, catch errors uh, in, your con in the configs at build time instead of finding out when the node is provisioning. So here on the right is an example, a YAML example of, conf of a built in configuration uh, for Fedora Chorus, uh, where we set similarly uh, an author search authorized key for the core uh, user. And we had some uh, systemd units and some files that we write, uh, some configuration files that we write. All right, so that's it for our chemistry and ignition, which are two core parts of Fedora Chorus. And one of the third uh, topic here that we'll cover is how Fedora Chorus is distributed via streams, which makes auto updates possible. So, Fedora Chorus is available in what we call three streams. So there's the stable, the testing, and the next stream. The idea is that Fedora, the, when content arrives in Fedora, it goes into the next and testing streams. So the next stream is here for like future, future versions of Fedora. So like uh, if you are a future version of Fedora that is happening. So right now we are rebasing to Fedora uh, 39. Fedora 39 has been GA just recently. So next has been on Fedora 39 for a while. Uh, and we are, uh, as we are rebasing to Fedora 39, testing is moving to Fedora 39. The stable versions itself, it goes, it comes two weeks after testing. So everything, when something lands into testing, uh, we let it stay there for uh, approximately two weeks and then it goes into stable it enables you to find issues so if you have a set of clusters a set of, uh, of nodes uh, you can run a small percentage of your nodes as in uh, with the next stream uh, to catch issue early and some with the testing stream to catch uh, to catch more issues and and the rest of your fleet using stable so to, for example, here right now, so Next has been on Fedora 39 for a while. Testing has is just being re rebased to Fedora 39 as part of the release. And in two weeks, Sable uh, will get Fedora 39 as well. And all of that, um, all of that automated updates, uh, it's only possible uh, because we have a lot of tests. So we have an extensive test suite that we run on clouds and on QEMU and uh, make sure to make sure that a lot of common cases um, uh, for Fedora Chorus work and work well. Every single build that we get out, every single release is completely tested on all of those platforms. This is core cool of what makes Fedora Chorus uh, automatic updates safe. So now, Let's take a look at how all of this fits into OKD, because as we'll see, there are some slight differences between how Fedora Chorus works and how it works in OKD. We also take a look at CentOS Stream Chorus and OKD and how it compares to Fedora Chorus. So first, OKD, we have now two flavors. We have one flavor, so the, the classic one, OKD, which is based on Fedora Chorus, and a second flavor that we call OKD SCOS, which is based on CentOS Stream Chorus, which we shortened to SCOS. So what's the difference between Fedora Chorus and CentOS Stream Chorus? Well, Fedora Chorus, as the name implies, is built from Fedora packages. Plus some configuration changes. They are a little bit of small differences from Fedora, but they are very small. Fedora Chorus itself, so it's based on Fedora. Fedora is close to upstream releases. Uh, new it gets new feature early every six uh, every six months approximately with new major releases. CentOS Stream Chorus, uh, however, is built as the name implies as well as well from CentOS Stream packages. So. 
sent to the stream packages are the upstream of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and they are a community distribution um, that are um, derived from Fedora but have a slower, a slightly slower pace change. So Centrist Stream Chorus itself also has some slight configuration changes as well from Centrist Stream packages, but it's uh, much closer to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases and has a slower uh, release based, update based. So how does this look? Uh, if we take a look at the, the entire Enterprise Linux, the, well, the, the Fedora, Red Hat, uh, uh, Linux ecosystem. Uh, we have Fedora Linux on the left, uh, which flows into CentOS Stream every uh, a couple of years. And then finally, what gets into CentOS Stream will get into the next major version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We follow the same ID with Fedora Core S, which is kind of the upstream for CentOS Stream Core S, and everything that goes into CentOS Stream Core S goes into Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core S. So Fedora Chorus in OKD, like what's different from uh, exactly Fedora Chorus by itself? Well, OKD uses a slightly modified version of, of Fedora Chorus because uh, it, it needs some tricks. So the first one is that the automatic updates that we've talked about in Fedora Chorus are disabled in, uh, in OKD because the updates of the node are managed by the cluster. So the cluster itself is responsible for updating the content of the node. So you don't update nodes individually or they don't get updated automatically uh, in an OKD cluster, OKD cluster. They get updated as part of cluster updates. Fedora Core S, that is also part of OKD, um, includes Cryo, uh, the kubelet, the OC command, and some other tools that are not part of Fedora Core S by default. Fedora Core S in OKD also removes Mobi Docker uh, because it's not used in OKD. And that's it mostly for the changes. So here is some links if you want to get involved in OKD, have more, take a look, um, get some more information, uh, get more information about Fedora Core S, try it out. And um, yeah, thanks for listening and um, see you in the next video.